First, we start off this hour with the latest from the IMF World Bank meetings and Ukraine's economy. The country's finance minister says Ukraine is expecting $7 billion in financing this year from the IMF. The funds are needed to support the country. The president of the World Bank has cited climate change as a major factor in fighting poverty. Jim Yong Kim said Friday that unless the planet is protected, economic progress will be in jeopardy. And new research says poverty estimates are too low. The bank defines poverty as those living on less than $1.25 per day. And researchers from the University of Bristol in the UK say that that figure is arbitrary and should be higher. The IMF has said that tougher market conditions and lower commodity prices will keep economic growth across Latin America in low gear. Countries in the region are working hard to attract foreign investment, and Mexico wants stronger trade ties with both the U.S. and China. Here to help us is Tracy Tandon, who caught up with the Mexican finance minister, and you've been covering the, the spring meetings all week long. Let's start with the Mexican finance minister. So, Phil, in my interview with the Mexican finance minister, I think the biggest takeaway from that one-on-one -on -one was the fact that Mexico has now been slowly opening up its economy by ending these uh, monopolies that have been dominating the economy as well as hindering economic growth. Mexican finance minister Luis Videgaray also spoke to me about the importance of doing business with China. Mexico has been growing uh less than it should not only last year but over the, the past 30 years. The, the average growth rate for Mexico the past 30 years is only 2.3 percent. So we need to do things to accelerate growth not only for next quarter or next year but to do it in a sustainable way and that's why, where the reform agenda comes, com, com, comes in place. Uh, this is a reform agenda that is designed to promote growth in a sustainable and, and, and lasting uh, way. Of course we have some so short-term challenges. A lot of our lack of growth last year uh, was due uh, to the U.S. Uh, and, and, on, and the things that happened in the U.S. economy, particularly on the fiscal side, uh, that, that's, that, that uh, lessened their growth. And uh, some things were internal, but these are all temporary factors. The government is accelerating spending to provide some support for aggregate demand. In December last year, the Congress of Mexico very boldly ended the 75-year state oil monopoly that's been going on in the country. How soon until the country can actually enjoy the and reap all the benefits from ending that monopoly? This year is critical for the implementation of the energy reform. Uh, the enabling laws or secondary laws uh, will be discussed in, in Congress over the next few weeks. And, um, and, and also some implementation um, um, matters that are not depending on Congress will also happen this year. Uh, we're working to make sure that early next year we have the first round of bids uh, for the private sector, both local and, and international come in and, and uh, seize the opportunities in favor of the Mexican people. So this is something that is likely to have an effect, uh, not immediately, not, not next month, but it's something that will have an effect, um, a perceivable effect in creating jobs, uh, bringing investment, and lowering the cost of energy for both uh, families and, and companies in Mexico over the, over the next uh, few years. For many political observers, as well as economists, they say that Mexico is a country of very concentrated power, in some cases, outright monopolies. Do you think that all the monopolies that have been present in, Me uh, present in Mexico have hurt the economy? I, I think that having less competition that we should mm -hmm. is something that first creates lower growth and also uh, concentrates uh, opportunities and, and makes it more costly for an average family to, to, uh, to, to pay for the cost of life. Um, as as we introduce more competition, and a lot of the reforms uh, is to introduce more competition either to specific sectors like telecommunications or in general, like creating a, a truly independent antitrust authority. Uh, this will create more competition, will open up opportunities for emerging economies and for emerging companies, uh, for, for small companies to become mid-sized companies and mid-sized companies to grow into large companies. That will create a, 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 a more diversified base for growth and also for, for having a more equal society. Over the last few years, Mexico has been really trying to build its trade ties with China. How do you see that relationship progressing over the next few years? I think we are we're having a, a, a tremendous opportunity. We're building together a tremendous opportunity. Last year, mm -hmm. President Xi Jinping and President Peña Nieto met four times. That's a historical high. And we're doing con concrete, specific things. We're working on attracting ch Chinese companies uh, to do investment in Mexico. We're talking. We're we're. We're working on setting up a fund 
that uh, will, will, will deliver Chinese and Mexican uh, investments um, into growth sectors in the Mexican economy and create opportunities for Chinese companies and for Mexican companies. Uh, we're working for a Chinese bank to set up shop in Mexico for the first time. Um, so so this uh, this time of a, a very close relationship, closer than ever, and for opportunities. And, and we want to be closer to China, and we think that um, uh, the, the timing is very right for that. One of the big topics of discussion here at the World Bank IMF meetings is tapering and the effect of the U.S. tapering on emerging economies. What kind of impact is the U.S. tapering having on Mexico, and is it actually good news for the Mexican economy? Well, what is good news is that the U.S. is growing again, and 80% uh, of our exports go to go, go to the U.S. Um, we do a million dollars of trade every minute between Mexico and the U.S. So um, whenever the U.S. grows, that's very good news for Mexico. The tapering is happening because the U.S. is growing back again. So, 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 so it's, it's, it's not, that, that is not bad news. Of course, the tapering may introduce volatility in the emerging markets. We create some shortages of, of liquidity and we need to be prepared. And uh, uh, what is very important is for the Federal Reserve to communicate clearly to the markets what, 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 what it's about to do. And I think they're doing a much, uh, a much better job now than they did last, uh, last, last summer or last spring uh, when the taper talk started. But I think that the market understands it better. And, and, and Mexico is in a good position to, to, to face this volatility. So the ending of the uh, monopolies, especially in the oil sector for Mexico, means that countries, sorry, companies such as Chevron, ExxonMobil, and BP can finally do business in that country, Phil. Well, first of all, let me start with it's great to have you here from New York City covering uh, these IMF World Thank Bank you. meetings. And a lot of times these meetings can be very technical, but I think we've, we've here at CCTV tried to bring it more down to earth, if you will, to try to explain these complicated topics. I, I just want to know from you, you've been covering these events now for a while. How is this one, this week, any different than the other ones in the past you've covered? That's a really uh, thought-provoking question. Well, you know, one thing is, let's talk about the common thread that is year on year on year at the World Bank IMF. You and I both cover it twice a year. They always talk about growth, encouraging countries to grow more, implement deeper reforms. But I think what makes this year different to previous years is that, for example, last year, the focus at the IMF and the World Bank was always about whether or not the U.S. was going to taper, when it was going to start tapering, and how that was going to affect the other countries. This week, the focus has been on we're in the midst of the U.S. tapering already. So now it is, how is this affecting the emerging economies, and what can emerging economies do to really buffer all those capital outflows that we've been seeing? So, you know, that's, I think, the biggest takeaway from this week has been the emerging nations. Yeah, it, it, it almost feels like the developing countries became sort of, they've sort of switched roles, right? Because at one time, some, some people, I think, jokingly said the U.S. was a developing country in the midst of the <laughs> crisis. And of course, that's now switched gears. Um, what struck, struck me the most was, you know, if you go into the venue, and it's a, it's a very big, big building, there are a lot of signs this year about fixing poverty. Poverty, that's and right. And the, the, the folks that you've been talking to, there's a lot, a lot of talk, and I'm always very skeptical of it because there's a lot of talk and very rarely do we ever follow up these discussions with actual action. Well, the World Bank and the head of the World Bank, Jim Yong Kim, he's been so-called man on a mission. And his mission is that he wants to end extreme poverty by 2030. And I know your thoughts on this. You think that's overly optimistic. And so do a lot of people, a lot of analysts and policymakers that I spoke to on the ground think, well, in order for that to happen, there's got to be a very cohesive effort. And the number one thing they need to do is have growth, growth in countries, because only through growth can that, you know, trickle down towards the low income and then the poorest of the poor. Yeah. Well, look, my thoughts are not only growth is important, but I would say education, education, and education. Trace, good to have you here. Thank you very Thank much. You,